Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Jeff Kenvin, and I am the Technical Director at Micromerdix Instrument Corporation. Before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple engagement tools you can use. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Additional materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you may find useful. Some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, so logging off your VPN is recommended. If your slides are behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. If you experience any problems during the session, you can find answers to some common technical issues located in the Help Engagement tool at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available after today's webcast and will be emailed to you once the session has concluded. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Pearl Kwan. I've had the pleasure of working with Pearl since she joined Micromerdix in 2017. Prior to joining Micromerdix, Pearl received her bachelor's degree in chemistry at the University of Georgia, where she studied both chemistry and biochemistry. Pearl is currently an application scientist at the Micromerdix Norcross headquarters. Pearl, we are so glad you could be here today to share your insights on temperature program analysis for the acid site characterization of solid acids. Hello everyone, thank you for joining our webinar series. My name is Pearl and our topic today is using the temperature program desorption to characterize solid acids. Here is the outline of today's webinar. We will start with some background information on the zeolite applications and structure, which was the solid acid used for the two case studies that will be discussed towards the end of this webinar. We will see there are many methods available to characterize a solid acid, but we will focus on the temperature program desorption, which is one of the most widely used techniques. An example of ammonia TPD um, on ZSM5 will be presented with the heat of desorption obtained from the first order kinetics. And lastly, we will go over two case studies I have done. The first one on the effect of silica alumina ratio on the acidity of ZSM5, and then the second one on the effect of heat on the beta zeolite. Zeolite is a microporous crystalline aluminosilicate that is used extensively in many industries. The Swedish mineralogist Kronstedt discovered the first zeolite mineral, stillbite, in 1756. He came up with the name zeolite, which means boiling stone in Latin, after observing steam coming off from previously absorbed water when the material was rapidly heated. There are about 40 naturally occurring zeolites that have been identified during the past 200 years. More than 150 zeolites have been synthesized. Zeolites are used in so many different applications, mainly due to their capabilities as ion exchange agents, adsorbents, and catalysts. Just to mention a few, it is used in water treatment to soften hard water by exchanging calcium and magnesium ions without negative environmental consequences. It is used as an adsorbent for pollution abatement for something like mercury or radioisotopes. It is also widely used as catalyst for so many different organic and inorganic re reactions. And other industries include, but not limited to health science, petrochemical and detergent industries. Zeolite structure has three components, the extra framework cation framework and the absorbed phase, which is water. 
The counter cation is present to balance the negative charge from the difference in valencies between silicon and aluminum. The main framework is silica and alumina tetrahedral building blocks linked through oxygens. As shown on the picture, silicon atom is in red that is connected by oxygen in white to aluminum atom in green. The presence of these oxygen bridges in alumina are crucial to pay attention to since they are responsible for the acidity of zeolite. The information on the acidity of zeolite is important to optimize and design a zeolite catalyst for a specific reaction. There are two different acid sites present in a zeolite, Bronsted and Lewis acid sites. The Bronsted acid, by definition, uh, donates a proton ion to form a conjugated base. As shown on the schematic from Woolery et al., the hydrogen from the hydroxyl group is donated to form an ammonium molecule. The Lewis acid, by definition, contains an empty orbital to accept electron to form a Lewis adduct. So in the schematic, it is the aluminum atom after dehydration, accepting the lone pair from ammonia to form a bond. These acid sites are crucial to be characterized to optimize for a catalytic activity of interest. So we would like to obtain information such as concentration of each acid site, overall acidity of the solid and or the binding strength of these sites. Different techniques have been developed to characterize the acid sites. Some of the techniques are listed here. The, the most commonly used techniques are TPD, NMR, and also IR spectroscopy. We can obtain information on the total acidity of a solid material, heat of desorption, and Bronsted acid site concentration using the TPD. With the NMR spectroscopy, we can quantitatively determine the concentrations of acidic sites and also qualitatively differentiate Lewis and Bronsted sites. Infrared spectroscopy can distinguish the Bronsted and Lewis sites. Pyridine is often used as the probe and the pyridine ion absorbs onto the Bronsted site but coordinatively bonded to Lewis acid sites which results in different uh, vibration frequencies to differentiate the two. With microcalorimetry, the heat of absorption can be obtained, but the binding sites cannot be known through calorimetry alone. So each technique um, has its strengths and weaknesses, and no single method is available to provide all the information needed. So we can pick and choose several methods to obtain the data of interest. And of course, we will focus on the TPD technique in this webinar. The temperature program desorption was first described by Eminomia and Sivitanovich in 1963. As far as the experimental procedure goes, first, saturation of the surface of a sample with an azorbate under well-defined conditions is required. It is followed by linear temperature ramping under a carrier gas, and the azorbate desorbing as the temperature increases is quantified by a detector, such as FID, mass spec, or thermal conductivity detector. All the TPD data that are going to be shown in this webinar were analyzed on the Micromoretics AutoCAM 3, which is equipped with a TCD detector. Here is a simple animation that describes these experimental steps. First, the basic probe molecules are introduced to the sample and they bind to the acid sites. The excess basic probe is purged out with a carrier gas. And the temperature program desorption starts with the linear ramping of temperature. As the temperature increases, the adsorbate molecules that were bound to the weak acid sites desorb first, followed by the molecules bound to the strong sites. 
Ammonia TPD has several advantages. It is a fast method for determining the number of acid sites. We can gain some insights on the total acidity of a material and the binding strength of each acid site from the heat of desorption calculation. It is a relatively simple and quick experiment with repeatable quantitative results. However, like any other methods out there, there are some precautions to take with ammonia TPD. Since ammonia is a very strong base, which means it can overestimate the acidity of a material. For example, um, Jess Kellis et al. showed ammonia even absorbing on calcium oxide, probably absorbing onto the weak Lewis acidic calcium sites. Also, the small molecular size of ammonia can get access to very small pores of high surface area materials like zeolites, and those pores don't necessarily engage in the catalytic activity of interest. So the acidity measured with ammonia can be an overestimation by including the acidity of those small pores that are uh, inactive in reality. On the right, here is a good example of an ammonia TPD at 10 degrees Celsius per minute ramp analyzed on the AutoChem 3. Immediately, we can see the two different acid sites present and the ammonia desorbed can be integrated by calibrating the TCD signal, which gives insights to the acidity of each acid site. On the other hand, we can use an alkyl amines as pro-molecules in contrast to ammonia. They are protonated by the Bronsted acid sites decomposed by Hoffman elimination into ammonia and olefin. The olefin mass spec signal can be calibrated and quantified, hence the Bronsted acid site can be quantified. Commonly used alkyl amine for this application is isopropylamine. Mass spectrometer has to be employed for this method since we cannot differentiate the olefin TCD signal, um, the propylene in this case, from ammonia TCD signal. More details on this method can be found on our application note 147. Next, we will spend some time on an example of ammonia TPD on ZSM5. ZSM5 stands for Zeolite Sokoni Mobile 5 with the framework code of MFI. It was first synthesized by Argauer and Lendolt in 1969, and it is a stable crystalline zeolite mainly known for converting methanol to gasoline process, which was patented by Mobil in 1975. Here is a quick animation that shows the structure of ZSM5 provided by International Zeolite Association. First, we're looking at the projection along 010. And then this is a view along 100. Back to 010. And then lastly, this is a view of XY plane. Back to 010. And we're now seeing the oxygen atoms labeled in red. The yellow atoms are either silicon or aluminum. Here is an example of an ammonia TPD. The graph shown is signal versus temperature plot. The silica alumina ratio of the CSM5 was 55 to 1. The ramping rates used were 3, 10, 15, and 25 degrees Celsius per minute. Um, these TPDs with different ramping rates were performed consecutively on the same sample. Here you can see the two peaks um, for the weak and strong acid sites. 
From the top to bottom, the TCT signal is from 25 degrees C per minute ramp to 3 degrees C per minute ramp in order of decreasing ramp rate since the peak maximum corresponds to the maximum rate of desorption. As mentioned previously, we can calculate the heat of desorption using the first order kinetics. The heat of desorption means the activation energy required for the ammonia molecule to desorb from an acid site. In other words, it represents the binding strength of the site. We can get a linear graph by plotting the natural log of maximum peak temperature squared divided by beta, the ramping rate, against 1 over the maximum peak temperature. By multiplying the slope and the gas constant, the heat of desorption of an acid site is calculated. Here are two first order kinetics plots, um, the weak acid site on the left and the strong acid site on the right. Notice the heat of desorption for this strong acid site is around 200 kilojoules per mole, twice as large as the weak site, which is at around 100 kilojoules per mole. Now we will go over the first case study where we investigate the effect of different silica lumina ratio on the acidity of ZSM5. As previously mentioned, the acidity of a zeolite depends on the presence of alumina, so the increase in silica alumina ratio will result in decreased acidity. ZSM5 with different ratios were analyzed using the ammonia TPD, 30 to 1, 55 to 1, 80 to 1, and 280 to 1 ratios were tested. Ammonia TPDs were carefully carried out, ensuring the same analysis conditions such as the initial coverage of ammonia under the same conditions, initial sample size, and the flow rate of the carrier gas, which was helium. We will compare the acidity of each sample by the peak area and then the quantity of ammonia desorbed and discuss the heat of desorption trend. All the TPDs were performed on the Micromoretics Autochem 3 with the same analysis conditions. First, the sample was degassed at 550 degrees Celsius under helium flow, and the temperature was cooled down to 120 degrees Celsius. Ammonia was introduced at 120 degrees Celsius to prevent any fizzy-sorbed ammonia. And after saturating the surface, the excess azorbate was purged with helium for an hour. And lastly, TPD was performed under helium flow to 550 degrees C at different ramping rates, including 3 degrees C per minute, 10, 15, and 25 degrees C per minute. Here is an overlay of the TPDs performed for each silica alumina ratio ramped at 10 degrees C per minute. This trend is representative for all the ramping rates. The general trend agrees with the expected trend where the sample with the lowest ratio, 30 to 1, desorbed the most ammonia, which means it displays the highest acidity. The quantity desorbed is decreasing in order of increasing silica alumina ratio. Another way to look at the previous graph is by comparing the quantity desorbed and the peak area from the first and second peak that represents weak and strong acid sites. This is a result of the first peaks. Um, as you can see, the trend nicely aligns with what is expected. The quantity of ammonia desorbed decreases as the ratio increases, which implies that the total acidity goes down with less aluminum present in the solid. On the right, the peak area for each ratio was normalized to 30 to 1 CSM5, 
and we see the same trend of decreasing acidity as the silica to alumina ratio goes up. Here's the quantity desorbed and the peak area for the second peaks. We can see that ZSM5 with 55 to 1 ratio has a relatively high concentration of strong acid site, but it still follows the trend of decreasing acidity as the silica to alumina ratio goes up. I had the benefit of monitoring the mass spec signals um, to verify the TCD data actually represents the quantity of ammonia desorbed. As you can see here, the 17 and 16 mass per charge signals nicely aligns with the TCD signal, also showing the expected relative intensities. Also, water signal was monitored to verify if there was any interference from water on the TCD signal. We can see that no significant amount of water is present and there is some negligible amount of water desorbing with the second peak. This lingering water could be from the gas cylinder or maybe from some water left in the system, or the degassing step might not have completely removed the water bound to the strong acid sites. Collecting these mass spec signals verify that the TCD signal nicely represents the quantity of ammonia desorbed. The heat of desorption for each ratio were calculated in the same manner as previously discussed. On the left graph, the heat of desorption for the weak sites were plotted in blue, and the heat of desorption for the strong sites were plotted in orange. As you can see, it has some interesting increasing trend up to 80 to 1 silica alumina ratio and drastically decreases for the 280 to 1 ratio. This initial upward trend implies the binding strength of the acid sites increases with the increasing silica to alumina ratio. This could be related to the higher electronegativity of the silicon atom compared to aluminum, causing the basic pro molecules to be more tightly bound to the sites. So the higher silica alumina ratio can result in higher binding strength. However, we see that the 280 to 1 sample doesn't follow this trend. This seems to reflect the difficulty associated with analyzing the material with very little acidity. As the ratio increases, the number of acid sites decreases and the material becomes more hydrophobic that there may be more difficulty to accurately measure the acidity of the material. The graph on the right plotted the strong to weak site heat of desorption ratio in blue. It nicely depicts how the binding strength of the strong sites are consistently twice as strong as that of the weak sites. Again, we see the sample with 280 to 1 silica alumina ratio falls out of trend due to the experimental limitation. A second case study involved investigating the effect of heat in beta zeolite. Beta zeolite is known to deteriorate with heat due to its amorphous content with some defect sites. Trombetta et al. also observed dealumination when the material was heated up. This can be a serious disadvantage of using the TPD method since temperature ramping is necessary. So we will see the effect of temperature on acidity of beta zeolite by comparing the total peak area from ammonia TPD from consecutive ramping versus a separate ramping. By consecutive ramping, I mean using the same sample for several ramps, including 3, 10, 15, and 25 degrees Celsius per minute. And by separate ramping, I mean using a fresh batch of sample for each analysis with one ramp.
Here is the result. So on the left, the TPD signals for all the ramping rates from both the separate ramping experiment and consecutive ramping experiments were plotted. The graph on the right plotted the total peak area against the ramping rates, also for both separate and consecutive ramping experiments. For the consecutive ramping experiment, which is an aqua blue color on the left, 3 degrees C per minute TPD was performed first, followed by 10, 15, and 25 degrees C per minute in order. The separate ramping signals are overlaid, as you can see, in dark green, which represents the TPD signal of beta zeolite without the effective heat since the fresh sample was prepared for each analysis. The total peak area at 3 degrees Celsius per minute is almost identical for the consecutive ramping and then the separate ramping, which makes sense because this is the first TPD in the consecutive ramping experiment. As the experiment progresses to 10 C per minute, uh, 15 C per minute, and 25 C per minute TPDs, we can see how the amount of ammonia desorbed gets smaller compared to the separate ramping experiments. From this, we can conclude that depending on the stability of the structure of a zeolite, different experimental approach should be considered. In comparison, this is the same experiment conducted with ZSM-5, which is known to have crystalline structure with more stability and heat. And as you can see, there is negligible difference um, in the total peak area between consecutive and separate ramping experiments. Here are the first order kinetics plots um, of the weak acid sites present in the beta zeolite from separate ramping experiment on the left and consecutive ramping experiment on the right. We see the different heat of desorption values resulting from the different experimental approach. So if we are aware of a material susceptible to heat, then separate ramping experiment should be employed by preparing fresh sample for each TPD analysis to accurately characterize acidity and the binding strength of a material. The AutoChem 3 allows the heat of desorption calculation from several different sample files to successfully calculate more accurate heat of desorption of an acid site. So this brings us to the conclusion of this webinar. Um, the TPD is a fast method for determining the number of acid site. Quantity of ammonia desorbed from an ammonia TPD gives an insight to the total acidity of a zeolite. Multiple TPD RAMs can be used effectively um, to calculate the heat of desorption and compare material. Increasing silica and alumina ratio decreases the acidity of a zeolite, which was reflected on the quantity of ammonia desorbed. And finally, some materials like beta zeolite can be very sensitive to temperature programming, so fresh sample should be used for each analysis for an accurate measurement. Thank you for your attention, and now the floor is open for questions. Thank you, Pearl. I'm opening up the chat for everyone's questions now, and we already have a few. Okay. Pearl, in your case, Pearl, in your case studies, you showed some really nice examples of really collecting a lot of data on samples. How long did it take you to run four consecutive TPD analyses, like on your first case study with the ZSM-5? So for the four consecutive experiment, um, it started with about 80 minutes of degassing step and uh, followed by the four different TPDs. So in total, it took about 16 hours. 
Yeah. And later on, you showed really nicely um, this comparison uh, between the ZSM-5 and the beta. When you had to perform the separate steps for the beta, how long did that take if you compare it back to just consecutive ramping? So comparing that, um, so each each experiment had the degassing step separately. So um, 80 minutes of degassing step, meaning uh, uh, 10 C per minute ramp rate to 550 C to degas, and then holding it there for 30 minutes. So that's the 80 minute before the ramp. And then depending on the ramp rate um, that I use, uh, 3C per minute, 10C per minute, 15C per minute, 25C per minute. Um, obviously, the faster the ramp rate, it was faster. Um, yeah, so. Um, in that uh, second case study uh, where you ran separate versus uh, consecutive, um, do you think this is something that should always be performed? Do you think people should always compare, you know, perhaps running the sample back to back, uh, you know, in one analysis and then comparing the results if they ran it uh, via separate analyses, just to confirm that we don't see this thermal degradation? I I think so. Um, if if the sample is, uh, you know, if the, if you're aware of the sample very well, like for example, DSM-5 being in, being stable and in, in heat, then I don't think that's totally necessary. But if you're unsure, if you're working with new types of materials, I think that would be helpful to just confirm. Um, you also showed several times very nicely um, is use of heat of desorption from first order kinetics. Is that a manual calculation you have to perform or um, is that automatic? Can you do that in software? Uh, it is automatically done um, in the software. You can do it either um, from the consecutive experiment or using the separate ramping automatically in the software. Um, if you want to do it manually just to confirm, um, that is also doable. Um, all the data, like uh, ramp rate, the raw data, are um, available. So you can just plug it in in the Excel sheet and then do it on your own as well. Um, we have a nice question, another nice question on ramping rate um, and the peak area. Um, it was a good question, you know, does the ramp rate affect the peak area that you see on some of these materials? Um, the ramp rate doesn't drastically affect the peak area, so the, the plot that was um, on the presentation I included the signal versus temperature. So it looks like the peak area is drastically different for each ramp rate, but um, in reality, if you plot them in uh, signal versus time, um, for example, so 3C per minute TPD signal would be extended peak um, over time compared to the 25 per minute uh, TCD signal. So you will see the higher uh, peak maximum with the 25C because it's absorbing really fast, but not necessarily peak area is different. So you should see a similar amount of ammonia desorbing um, for each ramp rate. <clears throat> You showed early in the presentation um, a comparison of ammonia TPD as measured by the thermal conductivity detector versus monitoring um, the signals for ammonia on the mass spec. Um, 
did you see any significant effects of water um, during the TPD? Um, I, we're just curious to know that um, does the preparation actually get the sample clean enough that there isn't any residual water from uh, that could be strongly bound to some of these acidic materials? Right. Um, so the water signal and ammonia signals were collected on the mass spec for all the TPDs um, experiments that I've done. And I didn't see a significant amount of water desorbing. Um, I put a pretty representative example on the presentation um, that had water desorbing from the second strong acid peak. Um, so, yeah, so mostly it is safe, safe to assume that the TCD signal that we're seeing on these TPD experiments are a uh, pretty good representative of the ammonia desorbing. Um, but this next one is, I, I think this one's a tough question, and we may have to discuss it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You showed some of the nice propylamine work, um, as well as all of your nice examples of the zeolite uh, ammonia TPD. Um, do you think you get any acids? There, is there an overestimation of acid sites um, because perhaps the ammonia is, is so small? Um, is there any threshold associated with uh, trying to understand if there's a, an overestimation of these acid sites? Um, it, 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 this is a really challenging question. I think a lot of people have asked this about ammonia over the years. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So. Um, do you have any comments on that? Maybe we can discuss it a little bit. Threshold. Um, yeah, I think I think um, the approach that can be made would be maybe ammonia isotherm, um, just to see, you know, where the uh, just to have more idea about the material where the micropores, uh, micropores are, uh, how much micropore volume is present in the material just to decide that. And then I think uh, in terms of threshold, it would maybe depend on what type of applications that you're trying to look at. So um, if you're, trying to, you know, optimize your zeolite catalyst um, that is active just in the in the mesopore range, then um, and I would look at the mesoporous, you know, pore size distribution just to gauge that, I think. Uh, that, I think that would be the starting point. <laughs> Any any input I, from from you, Jeff? Yeah, these um, <clears throat> acid site characterization is uh, always a, an interesting and valuable topic, and uh, mm -hmm. using TPD of ammonia is quite fast and quite convenient, and there's a fairly significant amount of literature there for comparing for comparison. So it's nice to have this always. Um, as a way to compare to other methods. Um, the propylamines offer some unique capabilities because um, we actually, as you showed, you, you d you're demonstrating some catalysis. You're actually this conversion, uh, this Hoffman elimination of the propylamine to an olefin and ammonia. Mm -hmm. uh, and that tends to be um, perhaps a bit more stoichiometric with catalytically active sites. Um, of course, the effort um, is more significant for the propylamines. Um, the isopropylamine tends to be a bit more commonly used than the n-propylamine. Um, the n-propylamine data can often be a bit more challenging to interpret because of oligomerization of the amine. But uh, it, it's a very challenging topic um, comparing different probe molecules and trying to get really an overall 
a single um, view of the material. Uh, I, I think it's valuable to, to really use both to try to understand it. As you said, uh, these tend to be um, microporous materials, and you can have some, some levels of uh, physisorption associated with the ammonia um, that eventually you, you don't have to worry about at higher temperatures. But uh, even at some of these temperatures, like 100 degrees C, 120 degrees C, there can be some physisorption. Um, which was really nice that you pointed to that. Um, the next question um, talks about your preparation um, and the TPD measurement, and it's um, that uh, one attendee noticed you used the same ending temperature for the preparation as you did for the TPD measurement. Um, is there a reason you did that on, on these materials? Uh, yes. So, because um, I'm trying to see purely just the ammonia desorbed from the TPD um, signals, I, you know, I, I just wanted to rule out anything that was that would desorb from the material itself. So that was um, included in the preparation, um, just by ramping to the same ending temperature. Okay. Um, the um, the ammonia adsorption um, that was here um, is uh, the, the ammonia adsorption only focus on Bronsted acidity, like the isopropylamine um, piece that you studied or showed earlier, or does did the does the ammonia adsorption capture Lewis acidity and Bronsted acidity uh, because the ammonia is not it, it is such a strong base. Um, does it capture both Bronsted and Lewis or just Bronsted? So it captures both Lewis and Bronsted, um, and also uh, some papers show that you know it it absorbs uh, onto not only those acid sites, um, but it can you know, be an overestimate, like as mentioned earlier. So, but when when you are uh, dealing with the ammonia TPD data just in general, you can look at it as a total acidity of the solid material. Very good. Okay, Pearl. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions we have time for today. Um, if we haven't been able to get to your question, one of our application team will be in touch shortly. Uh, Pearl, is there anything else you'd like to mention uh, before we close today? Um, I thank you for your participation and attention. Um, there are a lot of webinars coming up in this series with you know very interesting topics. So please stay tuned for the rest of the series. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for participating in today's webinar. If you have any feedback for us, we'd be grateful if you could complete the survey, which will be distributed in our follow-up email. We hope you found the session beneficial. Do not forget to check back for upcoming webinars on micromeridics.com slash webinars. We hope uh, to welcome you again soon. Thank you. Have a great day.